What up guys, John Arden's here today, got a Pokemon Black and White 2 Wi-Fi battle against D Dexy93, there we go. I've got a very, very long game today, well not very long, it was only 38 turns, but a lot longer than I normally supply. And if you look at my team, you can look at five of them and think that's pretty standard, and you can look at that love disc and click off the video. <laughs> but yeah, I'm using a love disc because... Uh, a lot of people on Skype been talking about how lovely this is good, and I was inspired to use one. Don't expect much from it, but look at the guy. I was on a Wi-Fi battle finder, hoping to look for a, a rain team matchup against the raid team so I can get my swift swim going, but I ended up facing a sun team in this team, so that's the case. Uh, but this was a pretty good game. Uh, his team's bulky with that fortress and Chansey and Jellison. Oh, Chansey, God, I need to get rid of it. It's such a threat. God, it's powerful, but apart from that, let's get into the matchup. Uh, I brought in Love Disc. I took out a Heat Run for it, and my Heat Run was my only specially defensive wall. So I'm going to have to deal without that. But uh, let's start off this match. I'm fearing that this Mamoswine is Focus Sash, so I'm actually going to go for U turn. I don't want to take an Ice Crash, even though I am kind of expecting him to go for the Stealth Rocks. I then see, because this is going to happen, going to bring in Love Disc. Second turn of the match. Bring out those threats. Taking the Icicle Spear. Like it's nothing. And then proceeding to go for the Hydro Pump on the incoming Chansey. And this is why Chansey is a threat. This is a Life Orb Hydro Pump from a Love Disc. And it takes it really well. But uh, now, I, I, now I can't do it, Kerwit. So I'm going to go into my Tentacruel to try and get the knockoff off. Avoiding the Toxic, fortunately. I didn't really expect him to go for that. But that's lucky on my part. Uh, I then go for the knockoff on the fortress, which is good. It's going to help me later on. This thing is relatively bulky on the defensive side, so got to watch out for that. Uh, I'm going to go for the skull now. I want to get the burn off at the same time, try and do a bit of damage. I have no special attack investment, so it doesn't do much. And he's probably got a lot of special investment, so yeah, that's a thing. Uh, get the burn off, which is pretty cool. Uh, hoping for that to be fair. It's kind of some re residual damage, and because fortress is still a type, you can't get toxic, so... That's the uh, best thing for it. Especially with no leftovers from covering, it's great. And then I rapid spin on his Volt Switch. And that's the first part of the game, people. Woo! Get that done. Uh, Fortress is not going to be a threat to me as far as I'm concerned in this battle. But this Broodloom is. And uh, Tentacruel, it's uh, time for you to go to bed. Uh, I kind of wanted to knock off here, but as you can see, it won't really matter. Uh, I get put to sleep. Tentacruel has done quite a bit this game already, so I'm actually alright with it going to sleep. I can then proceed to switch out into my sizzle. Sizzle, it's not a sizzle, it's a scammery. And uh, take this hit like it's nothing. I was kind of expecting the Swords Dance, to be fair. Uh, the Swords Dance probably would have been the better play, but it gets off the bullets. So he gets four hits, but it does nothing to me. I believe I set up my Staff Rocks this turn as well, because I figure he's going to switch out. He can't do anything to me. The prelim say you should want four Swords Dance, but it's even low sweep on map punch, so. Uh, I see there's perfect time to set my Staff Rocks as the Jettison comes in. I know I can probably switch out into my Hydreigon safely. And I do that and he gets the Taunt off, which doesn't matter. I'm fully, especially offensive. Go for the Dark Ball. So I thought this would have talked it out, to be fair. I am Max Special Attack Modest. But it turns out it doesn't and it gets the Curse Buddy. Uh, great. <laughs> That's unfortunate for me. My Hydreigon is a big factor to this team at the moment. Apart from the chance that you can take the hits, he ain't got nothing for me. Uh, as I can go for the Draco Meteor here, expecting him to stay in. I probably, I knew after I clicked it that he probably weren't going to kill, but he brings in the Fortress anyway. Draco Meteor will do a lot to this thing because it isn't, it isn't that good at special defense. Uh, but it takes it out. It doesn't crit, doesn't matter. Because either way, next turn I have the Fire Blast to take it out and the burn damage going on and I'm out speeding. It, I don't think that crit matter at all as he brings in the Mammoth Swine safely. So, I don't know, his death was probably a bit better for him. If, uh, if you can actually say that. But, uh, I don't want to take a, a hit, so I'll go into my Tentacruel. Mainly as Death Fighter, it's asleep. I don't really see a time where I can wake it up apart from against the Chansey. But I don't want to see that stall wall take place. So I'm going to actually... Uh, t I could have knocked off the Eevee Light, but I don't didn't see a chance for me to get that. Considering the fact that he knows I have the knockoff now, because I took off the Fortress Leftovers. I can't really uh, reliably get off a knockoff on that Chansey. But uh, after that, uh, my Tentacruel dies. I go into Love Disc for the second time in the matchup. He's obviously scared of the Hydro Pump, so I'm going to go for it either way. I know the chance was going to come in. I could have predicted that, but I really didn't want to. I just wanted to get a, let's get off with this, the, the Love Disc. Take more life or damage, but he doesn't have any hazards up, so I'm alright with that. Uh, I'm bringing uh, Landris now to take any hits. He actually goes for the Wish here, which is a bit scary. At least it's not soft boiled, so it takes two turns and then I can play around pr predict 
predictions with uh, protect and stuff. Uh, as he goes for protect, they're really like, like telling me that he has it. Uh, so later on in the match, if I have my Gyarados in, I could drag it out to the Protect or Wish, so I'm pretty cool with that happening. As Breeling comes in, hoping that he can take a Choice Scarred Earthquake, uh, most people don't expect this thing to be scarfed, so that's a good thing. Uh, he stays in, thinking he'd outspeed, which he wouldn't anyway, I don't think. Breeling doesn't have the best base speed. Uh, take him out straight away. See you later, Breeling. Big threat out of the way there. He could have slept something else because my tentacle was, asleep, uh, was dead, so fortunately that's the case. I count this. On the jettison, and my earthquake would only do around 50%, so wasn't going to risk any sort of crits. So I'll go into my Hydreigon, who seems to be the best guy to come in uh, against this jettison. It doesn't carry the ice beam, luckily, the burn doesn't matter. I am completely, especially offensive. Uh, I think I'm going to go straight for the Dark Pulse here. I don't carry U turn, unfortunately. I accidentally put Surf on it, it was kind of a mishap, but I haven't got around to changing it yet. As uh, so I believe I. Oh, yeah, I just go for the Dark Pulse. I honestly don't want to play around with predictions at this point in time. Uh, that the chance he is a big threat, but I'm really willing to mess mess up a bit of my plays because it can help me later on in battle if it makes him think that I'm going to do something when I'm actually not. Bring in Landorus, like I said, as to protect, protect fails. He actually goes for a double protect, which I'm pretty sure will have a 100% success rate because it failed the first time. Um, I'm not sure how that mechanic works, but I go for the earthquake. I actually stay in here. I want to see how much damage it'll do. And chances usually have a lot of defensive investment because of the EV light. And he actually takes that really well, so that's a bit bitchy. <laughs> Gonna have to switch out now. Go into my Gyarados. I see this as a perfect time to start setting up some dragon dances because he's probably just gonna protect or something. Uh, the first turn, I I knew he was gonna go for the Toxic because there's no point protecting because Gyarados always runs dragon dances as it's a sub variant. If I got off a sub then, that would be great, but I don't carry that. I carry Earthquake, Ice Fang, and Waterfall. Kinda wish I replaced Ice Fang with Bounce, but never mind, because always Ferrothorn and uh, Road and Wash basically wore my set, which is unfortunate. I do like the set though. Go for a Dragon Dance. I think that was my second one. And on the wish here, I'm actually going to predict him next turn to not actually go for the Protect and go straight for the Waterfall and hope to take him out. This is a plus two hit from a max attack Gyarados. Please tell me this will kill. Look at the HP go down and down and down and down. <gasps> Fuck you, Chansey. God, oh, what? God, that was literally like 10 HP or something. God damn it, Chansey, you're so bulky. So now that thing's basically a full HP, and due to the toxic damage, I can't actually stay in for another turn, and he's obviously gonna protect. So I had to switch into my Landras and make the pro's play ever. He's been double protecting all game, and on the failed protect, I know he's not gonna protect this turn and try and get a wish, so I slash him in the face with a superpower. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, is the final goodbye of Chansey. See you later, guy. God, oh, look, thank God I run. Super power on this Landris T. Oh, bye bye, Chansey. He's such a threat, and now my love disc can sweep through his team. Except for the Garcha, I'm not scarfed. So, yeah. <laughs> Brings in Mamoswine. I'm at minus one defense, cannot take an ice yard. So, I'm going to switch onto my Skarmory, who could take Mamoswine on for days. I know he can't two it, can he? If anything that he's got, he's going for the Ice Cold Crash, and now does nothing. Go for the Brave Bird and take out that Mamoswine. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, there's another threat away. And that, sorry, that was my defense system acting up for some reason. It was just daily check and it happened to come up this time, so that's unfortunate. Brings and Jetson, I'm just going to sacrifice my Skarmory. Actually, out speed, which is a bit out of the Skarmory. And, uh, get off the Brave Bird. He actually, uh, gets to curse body there. And if he actually <laughs> went for the recover, I would have done. I had nothing for him. So that's lucky he went for Skull Dead to take me out. I can actually have a free switch into my Hydreigon now. I was tempted to go into Love Disc, go for the Hidden Power Electric. But I weren't sure if it would kill from that range, and I didn't want to do a calc because I weren't showing his set. But I knew a Dark Pulse would safely kill from previous alternate altercations between these two guys, because uh, Dark Pulse did like 80%. But now it comes to Garchomp, his last guy. I'm, I've got a Gyarados, a Hydreigon, a Landris T, and a Love Disc, so I'm pretty set because I got that Love Disc around the place. Yeah, uh, my Hydreigon obviously dies, that's a Scarf Chomp. Can't do anything about it. Going to Landris T, thankfully get the Intimidate off, and still. I've got no defense investment, so I'm hoping this won't do much. I've got no HP investment either. He still has speed, which is unfair. He gets oh, almost 50%, so hopefully that won't minimum damage, because I'll be in trouble next turn. So let's see. Uh, he gets confused. Hopefully he won't break through it. He breaks through it. Goes for the Outrage. And I'm thinking it'll stop around here. Oh, my 6 HP. Whew. But anyway, guys, I win the game there. Oh, that was a close one. Uh, if you enjoyed this, do a like, rating, comment, and subscribe. I'm John Origins, and I'm out. So, peace.